welcome to the captain's video blog we are thursday december the 29th 2016 and uh yeah um i mm, did i talk about it like i've i haven't slept a lot over the past two days and a half uh maybe well uh <laughs> if i have slept 10 hours uh i mean be between all the times that i slept and even dozed off it would be a fucking miracle like i for sure i would say seven hours and uh yeah and even that isn't really too sure uh so yeah as memories my memory of things that i might have said or not said is a bit hazy like i might have forgotten some points about about wrestling like maybe uh the vicious beatdown of uh, of uh, rich swan by neville after their match yeah uh <laughs> saying bring me my crown and someone in the audience uh, he's yelling, shut up! <laughs> that was fun. Uh, so, yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, or, you know, parts of the of the wonderful banter between between AJ Styles and John Cena on Talking Smack. Yeah, that was fucking great. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so, one thing that I might have or might not have talked about was that I went to I I was going to see Kimi no Nawa, the latest movie by Makoto Shinkai. You know Makoto Shinkai, uh, Golden of Words, five centimeters per second. So yeah, basically the movies out of which you make uh, gifs, you make gifs, or uh, <laughs> or um, stunning uh, wallpapers. Yeah, the, the, those movies. I mean, now let's be honest. The the plot is also good. That's it's just that visually speaking it's fucking stunning like you watch the movie and you know the story is good but uh yeah i the the visuals definitely add to it like this time around uh, it had uh, the help of the camera the camera designer from anohana so another movie that another um s another anime that's uh, d d designed to make you suffer you know, <laughs> make you have uh, have fields, the kind of uh, very destructive fields. Yeah, and um, I mean, basically, to b the the story is is not you know too deep. It's not it's not really a, a shallow story. Like uh, I, uh, there 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 is the thing that's explained in the in the trailer. There's uh, the things that you might pick up from from the the poster and from the official press release you know uh, the one that is not too spoilery <laughs> uh, but yeah uh, speaking about that though uh, I, I really hoped I really hope that the people who wrote the the pieces is saying that yeah uh, where does where, where does the the, the body sw the, the body exchange come from what's it's a plot hole I hope that the people who wrote that in their pieces about the movie, really you know went uh, back to to read everything that's w that's available uh, about the movie that doesn't spoil anything because i mean it's really all written there the girl i mean she she lives in the japanese countryside and she hates it so she wishes that uh, that she she could be a boy who lives in tokyo and uh, you know there's a comet so wishing upon a star wish got granted yeah i i do know that uh, that uh, it's not it's not you know a very linear uh, plot pro progression uh, in the in the first uh, the first half of the movie but then again you know it's not too hard to piece together all all that information and also uh, the fact that it's it's not linear linear is also you know I wouldn't say it's stroke of genius it's just that it mirrors pretty fucking well a uh, very important plot point that this time I you know I won't go too far from the you know too far into that because that that is really going into spoiler territory so yeah um, like have a little bit of a you know of a, an anali anali analytic mindset because you sound like you lack that you know you just uh, taking everything and uh, not making uh, connections and all that which is a bit sad you know it's uh, kind of you, 
you you are you're not seeing see, seeing everything. So yeah, uh, <laughs> man, I was so invested in the in the plot of the movie that uh, I I feel like I clawed at my own face for <sighs> so probably uh, I don't know half an hour, uh, three quarters quarters of an hour, maybe a full hour. Yeah, just uh, but silently, you know, it was inside sounds because obviously you cannot make too much sound in a theater because you you you're gonna get your ass uh, banned from the place. So yeah, um, also I also had the luck of seeing the movie subbed and not dubbed. You know, I I I would have accepted to see the movie t if it had only been showed. Uh, if, if the only version showed would have been the, the dubbed version, it's just that I saw the trailer and the the dub wasn't too enticing. And when I saw that uh, the the only version that was being showed in a in a theater close to to the place I live was the sub version, I was like, yeah, that's fucking cool. That panders to my interest. Uh, thank God for kind of elitist uh, hipstery. Um, uh, theaters because yeah they they are the ones who kind of go against the law to be quite honest because usually you you kind of have to to have the dub uh, under and you know somewhere but yeah uh, <laughs> um, I mean the law is a bit more lenient now but uh, yeah it was a time you had to show things uh, dubbed in France that's a, a cultural exception um, so. Yeah, uh, I'm I, I'm a bit pissed though because apparently there there are people who you know love this movie that much that uh, they already reserved the the posters from for themselves you know which was something that I wanted to do m myself too so yeah uh, I I don't know maybe uh, maybe I'll try to see with uh, friends who are in big towns. To, to see if uh, they they can do that uh, for me, uh, we'll see. That is not really a problem for now. Uh, but if you have the chance of uh, seeing, you know, uh, Kimi no Nawa or your name as it is known in the West, uh, go see it. It's a, it's a damn good movie. Uh, you, you know, it doesn't matter if you like anime or not. Like I I I hold anime and anime movies therefore to a different standard than um, than more traditional cinematography but I think that uh, Kimi no Nawa would hold up pretty well uh, compared to some movies that I saw in uh, recent times <laughs> yeah uh, I, I, you know it's, I know that uh, you know it's it's because of how successful it's been in Japan that it's been released in France in in, in theaters but I can't help but feel like, you know, uh, I don't know, we've, there were so many great movies the, this past couple of years, like uh, uh, 2014 had uh, had the Tama, Tamako Market, well, the movie of Tamako Market, which was uh, pretty, pretty fucking good. There, and uh, this year we had, you know, Dokusei and Koino Katachi, and uh, last year there were all the movies of uh, the Project Ito. So, yeah, just... Just feel like sure you don't trust movies that aren't uh, Miyazaki because I would have said Ghibli but then there was Omoide no Marni that uh, did kind of a flop despite being Ghibli I think it was Ghibli I might be wrong uh, and then you know they people get cold footed so uh, it's uh, it ends up being yeah so we have this movie and it's a great anime movie and uh, uh, people like to like like it a lot. And uh, we're going to release it in one, one only, only one theater in the whole damn country. Like, um, and most times it will be in Paris. Like uh, this this winter, uh, or yeah, this winter, they they had a limited uh, release of uh, of the first Kizumonogatari movie, and it never even came close to the place where I live. So I was really pissed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, you know, uh, I hope that this test run uh, will be successful enough that, for example, in in spring when uh, from this corner of the world, I think it's that's the the 
the English title of this movie uh, is coming out. It's a movie about the woman who leave who who goes to to live in in Hiroshima in 1944. So you can see where the the plot might uh, might go. Um, <laughs> uh, I hope that uh, you know after uh, depending on the success of of Kimi no Nawa, this will have also a pretty extensive release over all over the country. You know because it would be great. You know uh, I I really feel like. Um, for the second worldwide uh, anime market, uh, manga market, uh, just after Japan, France is lacking a bit, uh, you know, lagging a bit behind when it comes to, to anime. Um, so, yeah, anyway, moving on to NXT. So, NXT, it was a house show, so I'm not gonna go too far into the implications of every match because basically you know despite the fact that it was shown on tv so it might have you know um some consequences down the road on on the on the storylines right now it's not gonna matter because it was the house show from osaka japan so the thing from just after uh, nxt takeover toronto and, and then next week they they are having they they show the the, the house show from melbourne australia so yeah, just uh, now it makes a bit more sense why they had all the qualifying matches for the Fatal 4-Way on one night and the Fatal 4-Way the following night instead of having, you know, one match a night for four weeks and then having the Fatal 4-Way on January the 11th. Uh, because uh, you wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have been like two matches uh, on one night and two matches, two qualifying matches, one and two qualifying matches on the other night and then the um the 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 fatal four way uh, with a, a you know two week break just to show the house shows yeah so uh, yeah anyway uh so all three titles were on the line at uh, the Osaka house show as is you know kind of uh, uh the thing with house shows there are always title matches but very rarely do the title change hands and therefore uh, the tag team titles and the women's title uh, didn't change hands. Uh, the only the, the only title that changed hands was the NXT title. You know, in this very overbooked match between between Samoa Joe and Shinsuke Nakamura. I mean, it's not the, the fact that it was overbooked to me doesn't mean that it was a bad match. It was a really good match. Like it was pretty well crafted, but. That's the thing. It was crafted. It felt rehearsed. So yeah, I mean, it felt rehearsed from end to end. There was at no point did it look like they might have been calling spots, like uh, Becky Lynch during their her match on SmackDown. She was very um, not uh, not audibly, but very visually, she always was speaking. God damn it! And it was it wasn't trash talking because. We would have we would have heard that no she was calling spots uh, so yeah uh, but however the fact that uh, titles didn't change hands didn't doesn't mean that uh, wasn't good good matches like uh, I do think that the tag match was the the ti the tag title match was the match of the night uh, DIY defended their titles against Akira Tozawa and uh, and Tujiri and the match was fucking amazing there was you know uh the, the two opponents having the same style you know so uh having uh tozawa and and Ch and champa how you know the very very fast paced uh, you know wrestlers um and also very technical and then you have uh you have champ you have uh no, it was, it was with Gargano, Gargano and Tozawa, because Champa and Tozawa they are the 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 ones with ones with the hard strikes. You know, it really showed when they were both in the ring at the same time. And then there was uh, Champa and Tajiri, who are you know very strong, but also very you know the chain wrestling. It was just when and then you know it was four guys who meshed very well with each other, and it was. A great match went for over over a quarter of an hour, like maybe t 18 minutes, and it ended with the usual, you know, the the stereo you know, super kicks. Um, but yeah, it didn't didn't take anything from that. Tozawa had uh, had a uh, did a tope, and uh, Tajiri uh, spit the the green mist in the air to intimidate Champa, but it 
didn't work. So yeah, it was a really fantastic match. Like uh, it's it, it, the fact that it was a house show also ha helped because uh, you have some some huge liberties on house shows. Well, uh, apparently according to a to a leaked document, not that much. But I, you know, it just it, sometimes it just feels it uh, the things said in that paper felt a bit a bit wrong. So yeah, um, speaking of liberties that you have on, on house shows that you might not have on on TV, uh, during the Liv Morgan and Aaliyah match, uh, and, and Aaliyah versus uh, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce match, uh, at one point uh, Liv Morgan had, had uh, Royce, no, uh, Kay, locked deep into, uh, into body scissors and she rolled around the ring like for maybe good a good minute and the referee at every time uh kay had uh, the the, sh the shoulder down he tried to count her but leave morgan was still uh making rounds around the ring and it was really fun and you think that you know in during a, a house show this might not be you know uh, setting up for everything but on tv it might be you know the setup for for the end of the match you know it might be the setup for uh, for then you take a kick to the face and you're done for the count, but no, because actually it's uh, Royce and Kay who won the match uh, with uh, Peyton Royce actually um, pinning uh, Liv Morgan, who has sort of a following in Japan apparently, um, and yeah, uh, like they, the, the, it went into more you know more traditional territory. For the the remaining of the remainder of the match, with uh, uh, Royce and Kay really um, isolating isolating Leah from from Liv Morgan, and even when she managed to do the the tag, well, uh, Liv Morgan just threw herself into into the mouth of uh, of the beast. So yeah, just uh, it was a short match compared to the rest of the card because it went it clocked in at under ten minutes. Yeah. So uh, when you compare to the NXT Women's Title match between Asuka and and Nia Jax, where just Jax dominated for the whole match, you know, despite Asuka trying to to do the Asuka lock and and the sleeper and uh, and basically, you know, she she had her all the, her whole arsenal and uh, yeah, I mean, it took her a quarter of an hour to really be able to. To uh, kick uh, Jax in the face and have her down for the count. Uh, yeah, did I forget a match? Yeah, I forgot uh, Omi Lorcan versus Andrade Cien Almas. Very good match between two guys who know the place, like Andrade Cien Almas. Remember La Sombra, the IWGP Intercontinental Champion, won that from Shinsuke Nakamura. That uh, that did happen, and um, yeah. Uh, uh, it was a very good, very technical match with uh, neck breakers and and uh, exploder suplexes and all that. Like Lorcan won with um, an in an inverted exploder superplex, uh, and it's actually pretty weird to see people win with uh, superplexes. Like you wouldn't expect that. I I wasn't that shocked, I guess, when uh, Neville won with a superplex because it looked stiff as as fuck. But uh, yeah, it's not it's not a match winning move, usually. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, because it's not really flashy. I guess that's a an, in, an inverted explorer is pretty flashy. But yeah, you don't see that you know winning a match, and um, that's uh, that's that's what happens on house shows. You know, a, ma a, a move that you might not see with a match wins it. Um, so yeah, overall, it was a very you know uh, for for a house show. It was a very enjoyable house show. The, all the matches were really good. Um, it just it just kind of kind of feels like uh, it's not gonna amount to anything because, for example, Nia Jax she's a mainstay on the main roster. Omi Lorcan and Andrade Almas. Yeah, no one is basically you know still. Um, <coughs> uh, an elevated jobber, you know, Almas. He's he's uh, in high profiles, in high profile rivalries, but he's there to lose. 
uh, and uh, I mean the only the only match that really seems like it was going anywhere. This rivalry seems like it ended last week. So yeah. Um, anyway, uh, next week uh, more of that. You know, uh, there's match with Ty Dillinger, Bobby Roode, uh, and uh, El Elias Simpson. And the last one is oh, I don't remember. Um, and uh, there's another match for the NXT tag titles with uh, DIY defending against TM61 because Australia. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you see that's uh, the logic of uh, of house shows. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. Bye.